Hello everybody and welcome to my video. Today I will be talking to you about how level design affects competitive gameplay in games such as CSGO and Overwatch. So let me start off by giving you a quick brief on what these games are. In CSGO there are two teams, the terrorists and the counter terrorists. The terrorists need to get to bombsite A or B. They have to try and blow them up while the counter terrorists try and defend them. If either of the teams are eliminated, the others win. If the terrorists successfully plant a bomb, then the counter terrorists have a certain amount of time before the terrorists manage to blow it up and win the round. If the counter terrorists manage to defuse it, then they win. Next up is Overwatch. Now Overwatch has many different game modes and maps suited to them game modes. However, I do not have enough time to talk about all the game modes. But they all pretty much follow the same structure, five people on each team, and they all get to choose from a number of different characters that all play differently. Okay, so now that that's covered, what is level design? Level design is the creation of the physical space the players interact with while playing the game. And today I'll be talking about how the people behind Overwatch and CSGO create levels in such a way that it enhances the competitive gameplay and the player's experience. So let's start off from the basics and talk about layout. In level design, you can choose from two main layouts, asymmetrical and symmetrical. Symmetrical is a lot more basic. Now, CSGO doesn't have any symmetrical maps, but Overwatch is a great example of one, called Nepal. Here, you can see how the map can be split in half, and it'll look exactly the same on either side. So what are the advantages of using a symmetric level design? No specific team is offered an advantage in map design. It is easier for beginners to pick up, and is more based on skill than tactics. And in the eyes of Stefan Alexander and Maxwell Perlman, skill is one of the most important aspects of a competitive game. And this is why Nepal is actually pretty good for competitive gameplay. Also, when it comes to symmetrical level design in FPS games, such as Overwatch or CSGO, you normally have three main lanes you can go down, the left, the middle and the right. These lanes then bring consistency to the game, and it allows the players to remember where the objectives are and where the enemies could be. These three lanes then turn into a fact that there must be some sort of unity somewhere in the level, somewhere where everything comes together and the main action occurs. This sense of unity is explained really well in the Gamma Sutra's article on Where's the Design in Level Design, written by Tito Pagan. He talks about how this sense of unity within a room is important for the player because the player needs to know where the main action is going to occur. Now Nepal is a great example of this again because it has that one room in the centre of the map where all the action takes place for the majority of the game. So that's symmetrical design. Now let's talk about asymmetrical. Now asymmetrical is a lot different to symmetrical and follows completely different rules compared to the symmetrical design. Asymmetrical has flair and it isn't just straightforward, it has character. The main design point is that it isn't consistent and constantly changes and evolves throughout the map. This is explained really well by a YouTube group called Extra Credits when they say The players get to think through new tactical problems. Lines of sight are constantly changing. He goes on to talk about more aspects, but the main point being... This is interesting for the player. It's what makes the game feel vibrant and alive. Stefan Alexander and Maxwell Perlman also talk about this in their competitive gaming article. They talk about how if the game didn't evolve, then it would become uninteresting and stagnant. Now, to put this into an example, I've loaded up cash on CSGO. Here you can see it spawn. It is quite open, and there's a lot of room to move around. Then, once you start pushing towards one of the sites, you can see that it starts to become a lot more compact and close range. And as we push on, you can see that there are actually a lot more lines of sight now that enemies could use to defend the bomb site. Now that we're actually on the bomb site, you can see there's actually an upper area that enemies can use, and that's also a height difference now. This is exactly what Extra Credit spoke about in their video. Not only that, but it supports the idea of the evolving aspect of level design that Stefan Alexander and Maxwell Perman talked about in their competitive gaming article. So Cache is a great example of an asymmetrical map, while still bringing that competitive feel to it. And as a whole, that's all there is pretty much to asymmetrical level design. And now I just want to take a brief section of this screencast to talk about balancing. Seeing as though, no matter what layout you have, you have to think about how they'll balance out in the end and how they'll play. Now, symmetrical is different. Because it is symmetrical, and because it's exactly the same on either side, no matter what team you start on or place you start at, it already is pretty balanced. And in the rare occasion where you find that maybe one of the lanes isn't as balanced as the rest, and is either a dominant way to go, or is unfavoured, you'll find that they'll change that by maybe adding some props or changing the way it looks. Apart from that, that's pretty much all there is to talk about balancing a symmetrical level design.
time. Okay, so let's move on to asymmetrical, where things might get a bit more difficult to balance. The only way to figure out how balanced it really is, is to trial and error, multiple design iterations, and overall just playing the game to figure out where things could be placed or how it could be changed to make it even more balanced. So what do designers do when they figure out that it could be more balanced? Choke points. These are great for asymmetrical design, especially when playing objective based game mode. Choke points are areas within the map that are designed in such a way where the players can hold them down till they progress to the next point. Another thing is just increasing the variables of the layout. So you can increase the amount of props within a room, you could increase the distance down a mid lane, or even just remove chunks of the map that aren't needed, like CSGO did with another one of their maps a while ago, Inferno. When they redid this map, they took this entire section out to open it up. And this was a long time after the original Inferno map was released. And that just proves the idea that it takes trial and error to realize where you need to balance this level out. And CSGO are even doing that still today. Players base their tactics and strategies on even the smallest things like prop placement. And if for some reason these aren't well balanced and the player has a dominant strategy that wins the game every time, regardless of what the other team do, the game is just purely unbalanced, as described by Andrew Rollins and Ernest Adams on their book on game design. So that's all I have for this video. We talked about symmetrical designs and how they have the three lane system with a sense of unity in the middle. We talked about asymmetrical design and how they're different and how they evolve. And how both of them should still try and balance out no matter what type of layout you have. But that's all I have to talk about. This was the theory of level design. Thank you for watching.